I'm going to do this just for a second. I think we'll be okay. Good morning, Prospect Street United Methodist Church. Good to see you all here this morning. We're a little low today, but that's okay. I think um, maybe too many of you are out at Halloween parties. I'm sure that's what's, well, not you, but that we know those who aren't here, that's what was going on, I'm sure. Um, I have a lot of things to say. I'm not sure how much time I have. Um, first off, if, if the screens go out um, mid-service, we'll just improvise. Hopefully it won't be in the middle of a song. Um, if that happens, <laughs> it'll be interesting. Um, I expect you all to just start singing whatever is on your heart, um, and that will be it'll, be, it'll be chaos, but it'll be Holy Spirit-led, and so I think that'll be nice. Um, that could happen. I want to let you know we had some wonderful week of ministry here at the church. Um, I don't have any details in front of me, so I'm going to put some people on the spot, and, uh, and Pete, I'm talking to you because you have come to me and, and kind of given me a little bit of an idea as to how successful um, uh, the fish fry was. Um, and when I say successful, I'm just saying, I thought it was, you know, I'll really be honest with you, I thought it was a success, even without seeing any kind of numbers, amen? For those who are here, boy, I mean, I just like, I told someone, you know, I don't, the bottom line isn't usually have to do with dollars and cents, but it has to do with fellowship and giving people a chance to, to do that, who have, we haven't done sort of those sort of things in a while. And I think you could tell it was needed. So I really enjoyed being seeing that take place and seeing, man, oh man, I don't think I'm brief. Is this just me walking around? Um, so good news there. Pete, do you have anything to share? We, we serve 347 meals. Let's give a round of applause to that. And no one left empty no empty stomachs, right? Everybody, whoever ate those meals were served nicely. So thank you to all who, who participated and helped out. Um, wonderful. And then last night we had a, a nice turnout uh, for our uh, trunk or treat. Um, we don't have the numbers on that, but I can tell you, uh, despite the weather, it seemed like we had quite a few children here. Um, and I, I dressed up like Mr. Potato Head, for those of you who didn't see that um, on on, online, um, and and for if if you don't know this, um, a tradition has started when I was at Green Camp, and that a, a woman who I guess probably has about a hundred costumes um, from her father, who used to dress up all the time, and and when I found this out, she's like, "I'll keep you supplied every year. You're going to be something different." And so I've been a flamingo, I've been a crab. Um, and this year, sh sh I had her pick it, and I was Mr. Potato Head, and I'm happy to do that. So we're going to keep that going on. Um, I enjoy just making children smile, and there were quite a few here. So a wonderful thing, a treat that was. Um, I also say, want to say this, and I've got to do this because I said I would, even though they're not here. Um, our two uh, twin girls uh, who come to this service, um, they... <laughs> They were at the fish fry, and they were serving. They were clearing plates, for those of you who didn't know this. And they came up, they wanted to give me this specifically. They said the fish fry, they rated it five stars. <laughs> so we're going to hold on to that. Five-star rating by the twins. Um, and they're not here, but I, I did this on purpose, too, because for pastor appreciation or staff appreciation uh, month, they came and gave me some brand-new socks. I don't know if they knew something was going on in in my life, but they gave me these Duluth socks. I've never had Duluth socks, and I'm, they're comfy. I mean, I'm, I'm about to go to sleep in them. They're really, it feels like I'm in PJs, just my feet are in PJs. I'll say that much. So I'm going to thank them. I told them I'd wear them, so um, let me think. There was something else. Oh, I know. Speaking of staff appreciation, we're, we are currently in a transition um, in terms of our staff. Um, we, you'll find downstairs where all the cookies and candy are on the table. It might get moved, but that's where it is right now. That's where I put it. A job description for a part-time custodian. Now, if you did not know uh, where, what, what the next shoe to drop is, I'm going to let you know that we are transitioning from uh, a wonderful custodian that we've had here for years 
Um, and I've only come to experience his, his abilities, his marvelous abilities for a short time. But uh, there's, this is a two-parter. If you know of anybody who might be interested in a part-time position here, um, please either inform them that, we have, that we're seeking, that we have applications, we have job descriptions, um, or have them just simply contact the church office. Um, or you can grab one of these and take them with you to give to somebody. So that's the first part. But the second part, I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Mike Duzma um, for all his service and work. Uh, Mike, could you come up, just come up here so we can give you some love, all right? I don't have a gift for you today, <laughs> but I'll tell you what. This is, uh, when, when, when we finally do get someone new and you can truly step down, we'll, we'll, we'll give you something even more than this. But I want to let at least pe people know that th we're, we're moving uh, to a new era, but you have done so much for this church, and I want to let you know how much we appreciate you. Thank you, Mike. One more, one more time. I'm not going to have Mike say anything. That would be <laughs> on the spot. Speech, Mike. Um, but thank you once again. Does anybody have any other uh, announcements for the good of this congregation or the community that surrounds it? Yes, Cindy. Okay, repeat that so that people can hear that. <laughs> That's too loud. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. You, the projection. Andy Stanley, Bible study. Okay, because I know I've had some people ask. So that's Cindy um, and, and, um, and Sandy uh, lead that. So if you've got any questions, see Cindy or, Stan, or Stanley or Sandy um, about uh, this Bible study that's starting on Monday. All right, thank you, Cindy. Yes, Mike? All right, uh, let us now join together in the church's mission statement, shall we? We are united to love God, to grow in our commitment to Christ, to serve others, and welcome all people. Um, I, as I did that, we jumped by the attendance stuff. So please fill out the attendance pads so that I'm aware of who is worshiping with us today. You'll find it here on the center part of the, of the pews, or the inner part of the pews. Um, just put a little line after your name so that we're able to delineate between um, or differentiate between the two services. And brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, this is the day that the Lord has made, and together we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Why don't you stand and join us uh, with this little light of mine. How about that? We'll start off with Bible school. This light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This is the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan get out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan get out, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shine all over Marion, I'm gonna let it shine. Come on, shine. Shine all over Marion, I'm gonna let it 
it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Woo, amen. It was really wonderful to see uh, the twins and their little sister and their mom walk in, too. I know. So praise no. God. Uh, Good morning. <laughs> you know, I know you're all young at heart, but, um, you know, we've got some vacation Bible school stuff today. So much fun. This song, the next song that we're singing, I hope you're familiar with it. It is just beautiful. And it comes from the book of Zephaniah. And I don't have my Bible with me to quote it properly, but it's essentially Jesus, God, sings over us. And uh, I don't know if you like to hear music. That would be the very best, I think. <laughs> I don't even have to say. I don't even have to say anything. Your little cow curls today. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then you got the pink boots. What did you say? Purple? Purple. Purple and pink and green. I love it. Very nice. Very stylish. Hers line, yeah, hers line up. She's got a little more bling going on there with her boots, but that's okay. Oh, I, now I see, yeah. I thought that they were dirty, but it's got like a nice, it, it's like a dark purple, isn't it? With, that's what you were trying to show me. Okay, I see, beautiful. Guess what I'm wearing? Where do you think I got these? <laughs> yes, I told you I'd wear them, didn't I? And I also told everybody about your, your star rating. Five stars for the fish fry, right? Yeah. The 
Python. Okay, good. Today is going to be, and I apologize, this is going to be a little bit deep, okay? So just bear with me. You know, that's exactly what I was afraid of. We're going to try this our best. All right. You know what this is, right? A rope. There's a rope. Has a one end and another. We're going to call this. <laughs> we might as well just do that and call it a day. Um, this is the end of the rope, okay? And we're going to call this the beginning. Kind of looks like the end because it's kind of, you know, a little bit more frayed at, at the end. And here we got a little beginning. And there's not a knot. It's just kind of warped a little bit. So we're going to lay that down there for a second. Now, the reason I brought that is because today's message, today's scripture in the Bible, we're looking at the very last book of the Bible. Okay? Revelation. And you'll see, you'll see. In that book, in the chapter that I'm reading out loud today, Jesus says, or not Jesus, the the God says, I'm so sorry, God says, I am Alpha and Omega. I am Alpha and Omega. And what God is saying is, I am the beginning and the end. Okay? I'm the beginning and the end. Now, a lot of times, we people look at the book of, the last book of the Bible, and they, they remind, it, it speaks to them in a way in which they talk about the end of all things. The end of life as we know it. The, it's the last book. and We talk about end times and, and when God will come back. And, and we focus so much on this idea of the end that I think we for, forget that there's something else going on there. In fact, as I say in, the, in, in my message today, that the word revelation is all about things being revealed, things coming, new things coming to light. And so, but we're so used to things having a beginning and an end, that it's hard for us to comprehend perhaps what God is really saying in that, in that message to us, being Alpha and Omega. He's, now, here's what I want to tell you. When he says Alpha and Omega, he's using this language back then of the alphabet. Alpha back then meant the letter A. Okay? What's the last letter of the alphabet? Z. Omega meant Z. So really, it's what, what God is saying is, I'm the beginning of the alphabet and the end. And so what I'm going to say again is, sometimes I think we, 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 we think that what God is saying is, I'm, I was there at the beginning, A, and, and I'll be there at the end, Z. But I think God's saying something even more powerful than that. Because I don't believe, I don't know about you, I don't believe God has a beginning. Oh, I think God's been there before we can. <laughs> yes, yes, he does, Pastor. I think God's, I think God's so great. God, there was no beginning. God's always been. And guess what? God will always be. There's no end to God. It's a hard thing to imagine. So here's what I want to say. This is a line, right? But we're going to do something because here's what I think God's actually saying. What does this become if you put those two ends together? It's not the prettiest thing. A circle. Very good. Now, what, what we know about a circle, I was going to bring a hula hoop today to use as another example. But what happens with a circle is it starts, or it doesn't even start, it's always. And you go around and around. Do you ever have an end? Is there ever a beginning? You just keep going around and around, right? This is what I think God is saying. That wherever you think that there's a, an end, an end to, to me or an end to our, the relationship you have with me, actually what it is is where that end, where that end is, something new, a beginning starts. So there's, an, and it just keeps going. There's never really a beginning or an end when it comes to God and our relationship. We're always God's always got circle, circle. God's always got something new in store for us. And so 
things might seem like they come to an end in our, in our life. Like you might end um, a, a vacation or you might end a, 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 you know, a, a time of maybe eating dinner, right? You, at the end of dinner, you clean your plates and you're done. But, but what that really means is something new is about to begin, right? And that's the way our life really is. It's not about just endings. If we, if, if we just look at it as things ending, we get kind of sad. But if, we, but if we look at it as there's always something new to start and to begin, doesn't that make us happy? Yes. I want us to think that way in terms of our faith. Not of endings, but to know that everything in God is all about something new starting. What did you say? You're going to make it a proper circle? I'll tell you what. I'm gonna t- you take that with you, but just make sure you give it back to me before the next service and see if you can turn that into a proper circle. But let's pray first. Can we do that? Repeat it. It looks like a jumper. <laughs> it does for a very small person. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for my family, my friends, and all those who teach me. May my heart and ears be open to all the new things you are teaching me, O God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You want to take that? You better find me later, okay? That's a challenge. I don't know if they'll get that into a proper circle. But, you know, more power to them. scripture message as I share with you already with the, with the girls is, comes from Revelation uh, chapter 21 verses 1 through 6a. Let those who have ears hear the word of the Lord. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among the mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Holy and gracious Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For you, and only you, are our rock and our redeemer. And all of God's children said, Amen. It's probably the first sermon I think that's probably going to really, no, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking incorrectly that way, but this this will get kind of like deep and you're going to be maybe scratching your heads a little bit and that's okay. I kind of like, I really like this. So I chose this passage in, in Revelation for today because
for the first time something jumped out at me in a very unique fashion as I was praying and studying this past passage, the one I just read now. <laughs> uh, ironically, some, something, when one could say something was revealed, revealed to me. In the very last portion of this passage, God proclaims words that we have heard many times and that we use to describe God or to name God, and that is, of course, that God is. We say it all the time, God is Alpha and Omega. And every time I have heard this name used for God, I, of course, relate it to the understanding that nothing came before God and nothing will come after could use it to say that God has the first and last say in everything. Everything else in this world will come and go, but God remains constant. This is true. This is true, but what was revealed to me for the first time in the phrase Alpha and Omega was that it has just as much to do with God's eternity and infinity as I believe it is the key in what God is trying to do for us in helping us understand how we should live with this idea of eternity in mind. So God's not just saying who God is, but he's also saying how you should view your own faith lives in this world. Now I know I'm already kind of going crazy on you, but hold on, try to follow me if you can. First, I'm going to tell you one of the clues given to me in coming to this conclusion is in the very title, and I shared this with the girls, in the very title of the last book, by the way. It is the, the last book of the Bible. That this last book is titled Revelation, okay? It's not titled Conclusion, right? Revelation. Interesting, don't you think? The book, the last book, which we tend to equate with the end of all things, is given a title referring to things revealed. Now, I know this might be a bit of a stretch, and so forgive me, for it is my humble interpretation. And I say this because I am aware, I'm aware, that not every revelation, friends, uh, in this world is delivered to us with a sense of something great new on the horizon, right? With a news of hope. Sometimes things are revealed that can be bad. Sometimes a doctor can sit you down and reveal to you that you, you're not too far off from your death. A death sentence is something that can be revealed, right? So it's not like the word revelation always means something new and great on the horizon. Something that can be revealed to, to signify what might, we might think to be the end. But I'm going to say this, I'm going to challenge you. When you really come to think about it, even a death sentence, as it's revealed, we can think that it's the end, but I'm going to tell you that's only because of our mortal limited scope of all things, friends. I would challenge the understanding of revelation to mean even if it appears on the surface like a death sentence, our own Lord on the cross, that behind the revelation lies yet another fascinating, wonderful revelation that is to come, and another and another. It's not the end is my point. That revelation is not the last one. I think there's a bit of theological irony in, in naming the last book in the Bible Revelation because I want to view the message in Revelation in a nutshell, if you will, as not a book revealing to humanity its death sentence, but rather to tell humanity at the very last book of the Bible, guess what? You're pregnant. Yeah, see? I told you, you're like, what? Now, I've never been pregnant, obviously, of course. But I'd be willing to imagine that to someone who is pregnant or has been, there are some days in which you feel like you are dying. Amen? Can I get an amen on that, please? Thank you. 
in the beginning, in the beginning. Ooh, you see what I'm doing now? I'm, 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 I've been talking about Revelation, but I'm going another direction. In the beginning, I'm talking about the first book of the Bible now, what happens to Eve by God? God, who I believe probably created, when, when God designed Adam and Eve, and even it says it in the Bible, when God created Adam and Eve, he was creating them for perfection, for longevity. Longevity and perfection was the idea. When God created that, he, he, that was his intention, but discovered really quickly that humanity was not going to be able to preserve itself, amen? Couldn't do that without, without God's perseverance in love to help us humanity to do so. So what's amazing is God and God's created us understood that for life, this creation to continue, it couldn't be done the way God wanted it to, meaning people would live on forever. Something new had to occur. New life had to spring forth from old. Okay? As I shared earlier, we have a belief that while everything else comes and goes, God is constant. But we also believe in our mortal temporal existence that there is something else other than God that is constant. <laughs> There's something else other than God that is constant. Maybe you know where I'm going with this. There's God that is constant. And what else do we always say is constant, friends, in our world? And we tend to use this idiom, one thing that's constant is change. We tend to use this idiom to refer to the idea that just when you get comfortable with something, right, it gets changed on you, leaving you frustrated. And thus change, I think, a lot of times always seems to be looked at negatively. But I'm going to tell you what. God and God's creativity, that's not how God sees change. It's not how God sees change. God sees change as the ultimate way in love to preserve that was, which was intended in the beginning. Okay? We are preserved, friends, not by being kept from change, but by going through it, amazingly enough. Life comes from death, peace, from turmoil, you name it. Unfortunately, though, due to our nature, change doesn't always come easily, does it? We resist it, do we not? Eve must have thought in the first book of the Bible with her birth pangs that you might as well write me as the last book of the Bible, God, because this feels like the end of all things. What a short story God has written, Adam and Eve must have thought. But what we have come to understand with God, who is Alpha and Omega, that God isn't about writing short stories. In fact, when it comes to God's stories with each and every one of us, God hasn't, nor I believe ever will, write for any of us an end. Amen? I hope you believe that. If so, I don't know what kind of God you believe in. But I don't think God's finished with any of us. Amen? And I think that's what God is saying in this last book of the Bible, a book that tells us, I believe, a story not of God's destruction, friends, but of God's ongoing, constant recreation of that which he loves. When God is saying God is Alpha and Omega, sure we can... We can look at those things as polar opposites. As I showed the girls, alpha on one end, omega at the other. Which is to look at them as linear and temporal. And then, of course, we see ourselves perhaps somewhere in the middle of this Greek alphabet, heading towards the end, right? I'm sure we all feel that way from time to time. How much longer do I got? I'm, 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 maybe I'm at beta, or I don't know, maybe I'm at iota. I'm somewhere on that line. It's one way we like to look at it, or I'm going to challenge you, we could look at them in another way, which is what is depicted, I think, on the front of the bulletin, that with God, where there is a finish line, immediately there's a starting line as well. They are one and the same. 
This is what I believe God is saying when he is called, or calls God's self, Alpha and Omega. God is at the end and the beginning at the same time, all the time. God is not leading us from the beginning to the end, don't you see? Because I don't care how it ends, happy or sad, you know this, an end is an end. No, I believe it's the other way around. God's not leading us to an end. God is leading us from that which appears to be an end always to something new. A new beginning is what God is always intending for us. Amen? Believe that. God is always leading us from, if we're in a state of worry to comfort, if we're in a state of sorrow to joy, from turmoil to peace, from death to resurrection, God is saying, don't worry about this. It's not a finish line. It's not the finish line you think you are coming up to. This is just the beginning of all the good I have promised you. We understand an alpha and omega, of course, as a beginning and end. Something is born and something dies, but God sees beginnings and endings the other way around. New life is born forth from death. And why? Because this is God's nature. This is God's nature. To have hope means to believe not in the end, but in the beginning. And that's how we need to live our lives, friends. That's the kind of hope we need to have, amen? Believing that no matter what we are confronted with, whatever we come up against, however it may appear that we've come to the end of the line, to believe in the possibility that when you are in a relationship with Jesus Christ, no matter what happens, God is just getting started in your life. And in the life of this church, amen, please believe that. God's just getting started. It's the kind of faith we have to have. But we must also humbly recognize that while God wants to get started on you and I, and trust me, every day God does, yes, God can't wait to get started on us, we have to let God do this to us, amen? It requires us to be open to it. We have to trust gone through what might seem like an impossible process, a process that we might be tempted to believe unavoidable because of the pain it can potentially create. Change hurts, it does, but if we don't undergo it when we should, in truth, <laughs> in truth, all we are doing is delaying something that is always going to be unavoidable, but now that we have put it off, it's just going to be that much more painful, amen. The sooner we throw up our hands and allow God to deliver us from the end to the beginning, the sooner we are able to see the light and hope, the new beginning that God constantly has in store for all who are willing to gracefully allow themselves to experience this holy change in his name. And all of God's people said, Amen.
bow our heads in prayer. <clears throat> I'm going to take this time just to encourage you that we're going into a uh, season of uh, stewardship, which we're going to um, take a look at our, our own personal lives and how we, uh, how we in involve ourselves um, actively in the life of this church. Um, and so I just want to draw your attention to, it'll be, they're being mailed out, and perhaps you've already got them. But if for some reason you have not, you'll find um, commitment cards um, on the back sound booth. Um, and so I, I, I'm not a pastor who, who likes, and not because I'm uncomfortable with it, but I, I just believe that the kingdom is much bigger than dollars and cents. Um, however, we, are, we find ourselves committed uh, to this church and congregation in, in a variety of different ways. Um, my message to you, and it, it kind of goes along with uh, the message for today, is the challenge. And it's a difficult one in, in, the, in this world that we're living in, where churches all around us, um, the pews are emptier than they have been uh, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and so it can be very difficult uh, to believe in, in something, right? A, a believe in a beginning believe in something new that's going to transpire, that's going to be revealed. We, we, we tend to get more and more doubtful. But as a people of faith, that is completely the opposite of what we should be. Amen? Goodness gracious, uh, this is the time more than ever that we should be extending our hope, extending our faith, believing in something unseen, uh, because it is unseen, truly. Um, we we tend to like to just believe in the reality of what we see. But God is always asking us to believe in something that is yet unseen and something that we believe can happen if we place our hope and trust in God. And so, as I'm telling you that with the message, that then requires us to step forth in faith and to do things perhaps that we've never done before. Maybe that is something that we've been wanting to do in this church, that maybe it's a ministry the church has always done, but we've never been involved in it. Maybe it's something brand new that this church has never done, but you and yourself are feeling this urge to say, you know what, if I take a risk here, perhaps, perhaps God will create something new for this church that could end up amazing. So many that have lost their faith in the church. But it requires us to believe in something that yet is not seen. And so, you know, where's that commitment card gone where I put it? It's right here. We can commit, and I think it's, there's nothing wrong with it, of committing just as you've done every year. But this year, it's not just, I don't want you to just, if you've done this every year, I don't want you to just write down a dollar amount and just kind of go through. I'm like, don't worry, church, I'm not going anywhere. Here's my, you know, here's my commitment. I want you to really pray and ask myself, ask yourself, what can I do? new can I be committed to? What can I commit myself to in this church that perhaps hasn't even yet been revealed? That I can, that I can find some passion and energy, that I can serve Jesus Christ in a way that might turn a few fish and loaves and, into something that feeds the multitude. We have to believe in that. If we believe that all we've got in our hands are a few fish and a few loaves or a, a seed that's no good, that's all we'll ever be. But if we start to invest and believe in something, I believe, and we, I hope we all do, because it's the God that we believe in, that something will happen great if we invest and put time towards that. So I'd ask that that be part of our prayer today. Let us now go to God in prayer.
gracious and loving God. So many of us seated here, myself included, fall into the temptation of no matter where we're at in our lives, we feel like, man, I have done enough. Please don't ask any more of me, O oh God. Let me retire. I just want to be comfortable. I just want to sit back and, 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 and reflect on the stuff that I've done in the past and know that that's good enough. And we understand, O oh God, <laughs> that while you're not a God who I believe, and I don't think we all believe that you're a God who is going to uh, decide if we're saved for the life to come by our works, but rather we are saved by the grace of your son, Jesus Christ. And we understand that, and we are forgiven for the times in which we have this mentality of believing that we're done. But at the same time, you love us so much that you, it pains you to see us simply putting the work down and deciding that, it, that we've done enough. It pains you because what you desire to see of creation is for the kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. And this can't happen without the work of your church. And so God, I know you're challenging. Many of us, as I'm praying this prayer, even saying to ourselves, I just got done working a, 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 a long week at the church. I was involved in the fish fry. I was involved in this and that. But help us to also see, oh God, that it's not necessarily all about the busyness and the work. But it's about touching lives. It's about touching lives. It's about introducing the world to your son, Jesus Christ, in a way they've never experienced it before. That's what you are asking for us to do. New work. New ideas. New ministries. You're asking this church to create something new. It won't be easy. Be painful at times. But if we believe that you're a God who will see us through, and if you we believe that you're a God of promise, then all that pain will be worthwhile. But if we just continue to sit back comfortable, looking at the work we've done, being satisfied with that. without working to create something new, then that is what we will reap. So help us, O oh God. Give us the strength and courage this day. We ask you to lift those concerns that are on our hearts, those anxieties, those fears, the stress, the worry of things coming to an end. And may we lean on you trust in you. Hold on to your hope that you're just getting started in our lives. May that bring us a peace. May that bring us joy. And may that bring us courage to do things we never thought possible. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in this place today. May, be, may we respond to it in dynamic ways as we go forth this day. So now, O oh God, as a body of believers, as those who profess the faith and grace and love of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray together the prayer your Son, Jesus, taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen won't you stand and sing and join
the praise team and myself in our closing praise song this day. There is power in the blood. Let us sing. Now this benediction, brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ, the children of God, in the name of God the Father, our Creator, who creates out of love each and every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, His Son, who redeems us and reconciles us into a holy relationship with Him again and again by grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit who perfects us and sustains us for the journey ahead. Go in peace. And may the peace that passes all of our understandings remain with you now. Amen.